Hey everyone and welcome to my studio. I am here to share with you a secret for painting food that actually looks delicious. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to paint food and it kind of just comes across as something flat like cardboard. Well today we're going to paint watermelon. It's a holiday weekend here for many of us and I thought it'd be fun to paint one of our traditional foods watermelon and uh, we've been eating a lot of watermelon because it's a favorite of our grandkids. Uh, so we have a lot of watermelon on hand and I thought that's a perfect subject but how do we get the watermelon in our paintings to look juicy and to look delicious well I have a secret for you and it's a little trick and I will get to it but I have to get through the whole painting because it's something that you do at the very end so I'm going to encourage you to stick with me to the end of this video so that I can share with you the secret to making this watermelon look delicious all right so we're going to start off by doing a wet underpainting so let me show you what I have so far I've, I've already got a head start on it here's my reference photo some slices of watermelon. I'm using a piece of Canson sanded paper uh, and so I want to do a wet underpainting, a wet wash because watermelon is wet and juicy and I think that by doing a wet underpainting I will kind of get a head start on that feeling of the wetness of the of the juiciness of the fruit. So what am I, I want it to be bold though. You know I want those reds and those pinks. So what I'm going to be using are these Derwent Ink Tense uh, blocks. And they're basically blocks or sticks of uh, compressed ink, ink blocks they call them. And you don't need to use a lot to get a really good result. And I'm going to wet them down, I'm going to liquefy them. So I've already drawn in my watermelon slices and I've done some um, application of the ink tent sticks and by the way you just use them on their side like this and you don't have to color them in very darkly because as soon as you wet them and I'm going to use water you will see that they're going to explode into rich color let's start with, let's start with the I like to start with the lightest color first so you can see how with the green how it kind of just really gives you some nice intense color. You want to be sure that when you wet it you don't make it too drippy, too wet because then you get too many drips although I do like to encourage some drips sometimes because it makes it for a more interesting painting. Um, I'm using water you could use rubbing alcohol or odorless mineral spirits but I find actually I've done a test the water actually creates a bolder result than rubbing alcohol. So I'm using water for this one and just a regular paintbrush that you don't mind if it gets ruined because if you're working on sanded paper, by the way you need to work on a surface that will accept a wet wash. This Canson sanded paper accepts a wet wash and hopefully it's thick enough so that um, it won't buckle. If you do get paper that buckles though, uh, when you wet it, you can either mount it ahead of time, and there's various ways you can do that. I need to actually do a video on that. Or you can simply, when it's uh, while you wait for it to dry, just put it under some heavy books. The paper will generally flatten back out. But hopefully we won't have any buckling here. There's a drip, but that's okay. Oops, you know what I forgot to put in this bright color right in this on this slice, but we can we can adjust that <clears throat> as the painting progresses. Alright. This is the this is actually a really fun part. Uh, and really when you do a wet underpainting for pastels, I encourage you to take your time with it and not rush through it as if you were just a house painter getting things wet. Um, because if you take your time and you end up with a strong, <clears throat> interesting underpainting, that's actually less work you have to do with the pastel. So take your time. It's really dripping on my green. I want to take that away. And now I'm going to just put in, I put a purple, like you couldn't even tell that was purple, but look what happens when I wet it. Oh, there's some shadows on the table, and uh, so I'm going to just 
paint the whole thing as if those were the shadows and then with pastel I'll make an adjustment. Alright, so here we are with the underpainting. I'm going to let this dry and then I will come back and we will attack it with pastel and then I'm going to share that secret for getting these to look juicy. So I will be right back. Okay, I am back. The underpainting is dry. I would say that took about 10-15 minutes and it stayed nice and flat, so I'm happy about that. The pastels that I'm going to be using for today's painting is a set of Terry Ludwig pastels that I curated. It's called the Floral Landscape Set, but I think we can paint watermelon with it. It's got the right colors and values. I will supplement with a few harder pastels and of course my secret uh, will be coming in at the end of the video. So we have to first uh, s develop this painting with these harder, or excuse me, they're softer pastels, and we're going to begin by reinforcing the dark areas. And now when I reinforce the dark areas, I'm going to be paying more attention to the shadow shapes, um, where the watermelon is sitting on the tabletop, my edges, so that I can make there be a little bit more clarity, the underpainting stage was just to get a road map, a simple block in. So this is, now I am trying to pay more attention. I'm using a dark blue. Um, you know, I, I might put in a few of the uh, important seeds, although I'm going to be probably covering them uh, as I go along with the painting, but just because I have this in my hand, I'll go ahead and put in a few just for, um, just to feel a little bit gratified. But, and, and to say, oh yeah, you know what, that does look like watermelon. But again, I'm going to have to, uh, revisit those seeds because they're probably going to get covered up. Alright, so, one layer of dark. I always like to add more than one layer of dark, so... Uh, the, sh the table is kind of is red. You could make it any color you want, but I actually like that it's red because it relates to the reds and the watermelon. So I'm going to use a darker burgundy on top of that dark blue. And then I have to think about the background as well. I always will paint the background at the same time as I'm uh, painting the actual subject. I'm not going to copy the shapes that are in the photograph because it's just not necessary. I'm basically going to just hint at the fact that there's watermelon in the distance, but this color is too dark, so I'm not going to use that one. Um, let's see. Do I need another color in the dark? Let's see if I just hint at a dark kind of brick red just to pull the red down into the shadows a little bit more. All right, that's the dark areas. The next thing I typically will do is the, the um, middle value areas and then I'll get to the light areas. So we need to know where the light source is coming from. The, the photo is not very good and it doesn't really show me strongly where the light is, but I can see that there is more light on the, the side of the, the front of the slice rather than the sides. These are darker. This is lighter. Uh, so I'm going to first start by blocking in the darker parts of the watermelon. And I'm going to just use that kind of dull, darkish brick red very, very lightly. So see what I mean? I covered up the those watermelon seeds, but we will bring them back out. So these are the sides. It's darker cooler red goes on an angle so I'm trying to pay a little bit more attention to the shape of these watermelons uh, give them a little bit more definition I thought that that might be too dark so I, and I still think it is but why don't we hint at some of these darker slices in the distance we can always cover them up very lightly so notice I'm using a very light touch that is so that I can get more than one layer. So now I'm going to add another layer of a kind of a dark salmon, pinkish red. If you followed along with my videos, uh, mostly I do landscapes, um, and oftentimes, or most of the time, I would say I use 
unexpected color rather than strict local color. But for these watermelon slices, I'm feeling the need to use the local color, which is the reds and the pinks, just so that I can kind of get a head start in that feeling of deliciousness. I think I'm going to actually make this foreground area... Let's think, let's think. Let's try a little bit of violet. Always like purple. You probably heard that saying, when in doubt, use purple. So if I've got a little purple down in the foreground, let's pull a little bit up into the background. Move the color around a little bit. And I'll probably use the purple in the seeds, and that will help as well. Okay, so we've got our shadowed section of the watermelon slices. Now let's go ahead and paint the the, the illuminated front side of the pieces of watermelon. So I'm using a lighter value of that same salmon -y pink color. Painting the fronts of those slices. I'm actually going to make this one a little bit wider because I have a gap in here, so this will be a fatter slice than I started off with. And remember, I'd forgotten to put the lighter bit in this slice, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in there right now. Is there light on the watermelon slices in the distance? We can hint at it. We're not going to paint it in detail because, remember, it's in the distance. It's fuzzy. It's out of focus. We don't need to worry about it. All right, so... We've got our dark side, our lit side. We can actually add a little bit more light to the, to the front of, uh, of those slices. So here's a lighter, duller version of the salmon -y color. By the way, these are great landscape colors but you can and flower colors, but you can see that they are working for the watermelon slices. I have a little bit too much of that color, so I'm going to come back in with the with the other pink. I'm using a light touch. Again, I stress a, a light touch. The right touch is a light touch because I, I really want to have multiple layers. So in here, I'm going to add a little bit of this pink in the shadows. It's a darker, and I'm going to just kind of skip it around so that it has a little bit more texture that the way the watermelon slice might have. And I'm going to use it kind of pushing a little bit harder on the edges where the transition is made. I'm going to throw a little bit of it down in the foreground, a little bit in the background, again just to move our color around. Okay, so we have to now address the green stuff. So let's start with a darker green to begin with. This is a darker, cooler green. And I'm going to paint the shadowed side with the darker green to begin with. Shadowed side with the darker green. And Let's add just a little bit into the dark shadows in the foreground. Should we put some in the background? So when I'm painting backgrounds on a still life or maybe even an animal, if I use a color in the actual subject, oftentimes I like to see where I can use it again. Oops, I'm looking for... I had another dark green. Here we go. Here's another dark green so we can really darken this shadowed side a little bit more. And then it has, it transitions into kind of a, a more of a yellowy green. So let's see if we can get a nice smooth transition going using a light touch. I'm going to put it in this the lit side of the slice as well as the side. And then it gets really kind of a yellowy green color. This nice yellowy green. Here. In each slice. I am not going to put 
that yellow green in the background but I am going to use this green which is a, a little bit of a cooler kind of grassy green so I'm going to put just a few hints of it back there so we can say oh yeah yeah that's that's watermelon back there still all right then it gets really light look at how it transitions almost to a white color but if we used white right that would kind of be too chalky looking so I'm using this really pale, dull, coolish green. And then I have one that's even lighter, almost, it's almost white, but it's really yellow. And I'll put it on the front side, the front of that slice. Not on the, I'm not going to put it on the shadowed side, because then all of a sudden it would take it out of the shadow. But I'm going to pull it up into the actual piece of watermelon. I'm actually going to put a little bit of that really, really pale yellow up into the light, to the lit portion. This is part of the secret. We're not there yet. But part of the secret is to go from the darkest to the lightest and to use a very light touch so that you don't obliterate the colors that are underneath. And if you use a light enough touch, you're going to start to get that really frosty feeling of nice cold juicy watermelon. Alright, I'm going to do something. We're, we're getting to the finish. So hang in there. I want this, the texture of the watermelon to really stand out. And so for that to happen I need a contrast in the texture. So I'm taking a piece of pipe insulation foam and I'm blending in the background just a little bit so I can get rid of the texture so that these guys can start to pop forward. I'm going to do the same thing to a lesser extent in the foreground. All right, I'm getting to the finish. Show that part. Show that. This thing? Pipe insulation foams, the stuff you wrap around your pipes. I'm coming up to the finish, so we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to take my super dark, and this is Terry Ludwig uh, eggplant color. And it's really rich. You see how much darker it is than the darkest dark that I've already used? And I'm going to just put it in those deepest recesses of the shadows. Right where the watermelon is sitting on the table. And I actually can pull it out just a little bit. Just to ground these guys so they don't look like they're floating. And that they're really... grounded onto the tabletop. Alright, but here's the, tr the the idea of using this super dark, I like to call it. If you use it everywhere, it loses its impact. Because if, if I put this dark everywhere, oh, you wouldn't have that feeling of light. I'm looking at this and I feel like there would be a little bit a uh, hint of the watermelon color reflected on the table. So I just threw that in there while I was thinking about it. <clears throat> okay, let's do some of the seeds. I love this eggplant for doing the seeds. I'm going to have them, I'm going to start them all are off as um, dark, but I'm going to lighten the ones that are in the, for in the front so that I can keep the feeling of them going. Uh, in the shadows. Notice the watermelon seeds are kind of linear, some of them have a linear quality to them. Our brain wants to tell us that watermelon seeds are these, you know, kind of rounded, oblong shapes, but if we paint them the way our brain wants to do them, then rather than what they really look like, they're not going to look very uh, natural. Alright, so now I'm going to take the watermelon seeds in the front. Here, I'm going to add a little bit of dark blue to them and that helps them, lightens them just a hair and really gives them a little bit more interest. Now some of the watermelon, where, where the seeds are, you notice that the watermelon is actually darker, like where, the, where they're sticking into the, um, sticking out of the piece of fruit. So I'm just adding a little bit of that darker salmon color in here. Alright, now how can we get these to look this one can be a little bit darker 
How can we get these guys to look juicy and wet? Um, I'm going to take out my secret weapon. First of all, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to take a little bit of workable fixative. I'm going to spray lightly the watermelon. You can see that it darkened them. Uh, but what's going to happen as soon as this dries, and I gave it just a really quick brief spray, I'm going to go back with the colors that I used in those same sections and very, very lightly going to go over those areas that I just darkened with fixative. So what this does is the fixative kind of fix those colors into place, darken them, and now when I'm going over with my pastel, it skips over and creates this really uh, fun illusion of texture. And it's, it's probably hard to see on the camera, um, but the pastel doesn't go everywhere. It just kind of skips over in places, and that gives this feeling of the mealiness or the texture of the watermelon slice. All right. The next bit to the secret is iridescent pastels. So these are Sennelier uh, iridescent pastels. And I'm going to take, let's take this one. I need to break a bit of it off and take it out of its wrapper. <clears throat> and I'm going to very gently pull some of this iridescent pastel over the darkened areas just to hint at that wonderful, wet, juicy feeling that you get with a good piece of watermelon. And it's like, as a secret weapon, if you put it everywhere, it's nowhere, right? So you really want to be, um, here's a pink. What happens if we do a little bit of pink? Ooh. And it may not even show up on the camera, but in real life, it's really cool. The little iridescent flecks that you get uh, kind of really makes it look a little bit wetter. Um, there, the only other thing that I would like to do is I would like to add some of the lighter seeds. You know how sometimes you have the, the dark seeds, some of them have the lighter seeds, so I'm going to add a few of those in. And then I'm going to make some of the edges on this watermelon a little bit harder. I'm, I'm working with a, a hard new pastel stick. And I'm doing that on not all of the watermelon pieces, but just some of them. Make, this is the main watermelon piece. This guy's the star. And to the, a lesser extent, the one next to it is a supporting character. So I'm going to just create a few harder edges so that your eye will go to those harder edges. I will do the same thing for the green. Just a couple of linear marks to just allow your eye to pick up on some areas and then have the rest kind of slip into a little bit of oblivion. Let's put a little bit more of the green, kind of drawing the eye down to our star and maybe just a hint of the green on the foreground. And I think I'm going to call this watermelon done. So I hope you get to enjoy some watermelon uh, this weekend. Have fun painting. Cut some pieces so that you can paint it, eat it, enjoy it. And I hope you've enjoyed this demo. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this demo, you want more, join me on my Patreon page. I have demos every Monday along with a lot more, three years worth of information for you. Join me. I'd love to have you. And thanks for tuning in and enjoy the weekend.